Hello, my beautiful astrology soulmates, and welcome to your horoscope for the week of September 28th, where this week we've got Pluto coming out of retrograde, Saturn's out of retrograde, we've got a full moon happening, and then we're going to have another full moon at the end of the month. Mars is still retrograde, Venus moves into Virgo, so it is a, it is a week. I think I said month, but it's just a week. We're going to just do one week. But it is a week that is definitely busy. And it's interesting because we get this pull right here at the beginning of the week as we're going in. That's like, yes, things are coming out of retrograde. Let's rush forward. But also we get Saturn who is going to tell us to just pause for just a minute. So it is a it is a busy week. It is definitely a busy week. So let's definitely jump in here and talk about this. But before we get there, this week on the Eat and Greets, we will be welcoming over Glenn Mitchell. That fell through because technology hated us last time. So this time, hopefully the tech gods will be good to us. Come on, Mercury, work with me. You know what I'm saying? As well, at the end of the week, we will have Jessica Lanyato over here and the glasses, the hair, all the Jessica will be here and I absolutely can't wait. It's going to be a really good talk. We're going to talk about some relationship things and I think you guys will really, if you have not interacted with her before, enjoy all of the good juicy conversation. So I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets. And this is the week, this weekend, you guys, to sign up for the Astrology University Summit. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about astrology and world events. I'll be there. Michael A. Bryan, Tony Howard, um, Shakira Taborn will be there. I guess Vanessa Montgomery, Kelly Surtees, lots. It's just a loaded weekend, the third and the fourth, and you can get registered in the description box down below. So I hope to see you guys over there as well well and it is free unless you want the all access pass but if it is free get in and join us okay all right jumping into this week as we come into the week pretty much immediately here one of the things that caught my eye first and foremost is that we've got beautiful venus who's over in the energy of leo in a really nice trine to mars who is retrograde now anytime the lovers venus and mars are interacting and chasing each other around the uh, around the skies up there there's usually just a lovely kind of romantic interaction that can come with it but i really love this particular energy because venus Venus and Leo wants to be seen. She's like, excuse me, I'm cute, right? It is an energy that is big. I want to be regal. I want to be known. Mars in Aries is in a fellow fire energy, even if he is retrograde. So this brings like a whoosh, kind of an excitement to the table or a heat, something that is very, very much so alive. And I love this energy as we start the week because you've got this day here on the 28th. What makes you feel alive? What's making you feel free in where you feel like you need to be acknowledged in your money, in your romance, in the things that you value, and that's bonking up against maybe strategy or actions that you're taking that you're not being seen? You know, do you feel like you're really creative and you could really just do a good job if they only knew your name? Well, what is your strategy? What are your actions looking like to get you out there? In your relationships, are you trying to get a need met or are you trying to say, see me, see me, but you're taking a wrong action or you're not speaking up, right? Bunking into this Mars retrograde brings that beautiful fire to the table, but it also encourages us to look at, look at what is going on and how our strategies, our actions, and our desires are aligning here to get this beautiful Leo energy met, this fire fed, essentially. Now, on the same day, we've got, just depending on where you are, 28th, 29th, we're going to see Saturn coming direct, which is absolutely beautiful. Saturn has been retrograde since May, May 10th of this year. And so as Saturn comes out of retrograde here and Saturn does this wake up, remember, first of all, before we really experience the full blessing of a planet, it needs to get going back in its forward motion. So as Saturn is waking up, let him have his cosmic latte, get his Saturnian life together and then get busy like with the blessings because Saturn does bring blessings. If you haven't had a chance to watch the talk with Laura Nelbondian in the Eat and Greets as well as Achuta Baba, we talk about the mystical side of Saturn. So Saturn has brought some blessings as well during this retrograde. Now we need to wake up to the reality of seeing them. We have changed. We have grown. We have matured. Something in our life has come into more solid structure. We've outgrown some fear, grown into some mastery. So now as Saturn wakes up, these areas, wherever this is at in your particular chart, look for um, 
the 25 degrees of Capricorn, that's what you want to mark on your chart. Look at that area in that house, what that's connected to. Have these areas firmed up or what looks different because they're going to come back into heavy focus as Saturn is out of this retrograde. The other thing about a Saturn retrograde is when he comes out, what we are usually left with and what we've developed is a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance, a lot of understanding that we need those things if we're going to achieve what it is that we want to, if we're going to be able to take on these responsibilities, if we're going to meet these challenges. So you really come out of a Saturn retrograde, especially if you can acknowledge the blessings, a lot firmer and ready to take on some things in front of you. Now, the next day as we're rolling into this, we see that retrograde Mars coming into a square with Saturn who's just woken up. Now Mars and Saturn hold this kind of parent-child relationship anyways. Mars says I do what I want. I'm going forward. Saturn's like no you don't. You know and so now we've got Mars retrograde so he's steaming backwards right. So he's still a hot pot of energy but he's steaming backwards here in Aries and Saturn has just woken up but is now facing forward. So they're kind of meeting in this square under a tension like this Saturn's like Mars where are you going hold on and Mars is like no I see it I can go back I can fix it I can redo it I can I can I can I can and Saturn's like I know you can I know you can you're smart you're brilliant you're hot you know you got all of it going on but wait a minute so as these two square each other what you want to know is when we're rolling around Tuesday maybe even Wednesday energy you may feel this urge to jump it forward. I want to push it forward. Let Saturn show you. Let that new maturity, that new ability to be patient and persistent show you maybe where this is great that you've got the energy, but the strategy needs a little realignment. So don't push is what I'm saying. And also don't push on yourself that day. Give yourself a little bit of grace. I know these planets are coming out of retrograde, you guys, and I can literally feel feel the shift. I don't know about you. When Jupiter came out of retrograde, I was like, whoa. So I don't know if you can feel this as well. And so it feels like, good, that's done. Let me move forward. Just give it just two days. Just give it two days, okay? As we continue to trudge on and we're getting into October, October is whipping in here with a full moon and it's a full moon in Aries. Oh, love that the full moon says we need to end something, acknowledge something, make an adjustment to something, but it's shedding a whole bunch of light on whatever's going on. So wherever this Aries energy is hitting in your chart, there's going to be a big focus here. Now, this moon speaks to closures. Now, it's not always a closure that something has to end necessarily, but a closure we're winding it down. You know, maybe you've even been in a high um, cycle of work or a high season of work, and this may be a time of winding down a little bit or cleaning out so that your space is easier to navigate. But in the energy of Aries as well, I really think a full moon in the warrior is our time that says harvest. Harvest everything that you've been doing. Take yourself out there. Harvest your crops. See what you've done. Right? Very I. It's a very I energy. See where you've won. See where you've put down, where you've surrendered to win in order to have you moving forward at full steam full capacity. Now we do want to keep in mind that the ruler of this moon, which is Mars, is retrograde at this time. So this full moon could certainly have a fair amount of tapping in where you're still looking at bringing something from the past to closure, bringing some actions from the past to closure. We've slipped into this autumn equinox. So this moon here is also happening just on the other side of that equinox where we are preparing to take ourselves forward. I, my identity forward. We're moving forward into a new season, right? So how are you going to do that? I think that this full moon speaks ever so beautifully to that. Not to mention we've had Venus and Mars in a trine at the beginning of the week, so that's very lovely. Now, at this moon, we're also going to see that this, this Mars energy will have squared Saturn and definitely Pluto here as well. So this gives me a sense that there is this sense of push and I don't know why you guys, but I just keep seeing and I, I think I have to say it out loud. It's like the vote, the vote, something about voting. This is something about voting. Maybe are you reconsidering how you would want to be voting if you're here in the United States? It's like your identity has changed or something because it feels like this moon 
the tail end of it feels like a push against authority. You're wanting to push against authority and you're wanting to say my way, this is what I want, this is how I'd like to do this fight. And you're really pushing against that with the Saturn Pluto square that's also going to be putting some emphasis on this moon as well. So please keep me posted in the comment section down below, especially, you know, if you're in the United States and you've got some of this uh, election vibe going on, I would love to hear how does that resonate with you? Because that's interesting to have that come through that way. Now, as we get ready to close out this week, we get to the second first and Venus moves into the energy of Virgo. Now, Virgo energy is our natural healer right? Our natural pattern finder, our natural mutable energy. So kind of flexible in it. But Virgo is also very good at discernment and dissemin discernment and dissemination of information. So here, Venus is going to start to want to pick the priorities. Venus is going to go through your love, your money, your relationships, the way that you're attracting things into your life, the way that you are putting yourself out there to attract things to you and start to look at you know, separate the trim, the fat. Venus is going to be trimming the fat in Virgo. I don't know what else to say, but it is definitely going to be what is useful, what is not. What is the priority? What is not? It can become very, very meticulous in looking through the details of this area of your life. This is not a transit for Venus that is highly emotional, typically, because that's not what Virgo's about. Virgo's like, I want the healthiest that we can possibly have available to us in these areas of our life. So as Venus moves into Virgo, look at your relationships, your money, the way that you're attracting things, and your values. Man, this vote thing has got me spun this week, so I'm really interested to see what that's tied to for us out there but even in the way that you vote this energy is going to ask you to sort out your priorities now venus and virgo can get nitpicky if we're living it in that lower vibration and you can get nitpicky of yourself like you're not giving yourself any grace you're not letting yourself off the hook you feel like this has to be perfect it's not enough i shouldn't put it out there if it's not perfect and none of that is really going to be very useful. That's the lower level of these things, right? Now, what we can also see is that maybe you're being nitpicky with people in your life or at work, wherever these um, Virgo energies hit in your chart. So just make sure you're trying to take it to the higher level of that, okay? As we close out this week on the 4th, Sunday the 4th, we're going to see Pluto coming out of retrograde. So that means Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, all out of retrograde. The big guys in the Capricorn Council are out of retrograde, ready to move forward. But of course, Pluto gets to have his latte as well. So you got to give Pluto a couple days to wake up. Now, Pluto coming out of retrograde. I think this is a beautiful energy where you can start to consider again, not only where have I been changed, where have I matured, where have I come to the next level, but what have I put down, right? What from my past has fallen from me. Pluto is our destroyer. What have you let go of? Because as you travel forward now, you are going to be lighter. You're going to be freer. There's a spiritual lightness, I think, that will come to you that you get to see because you've evolved. You put that thing back there down. And good for you. Good on you. This has been a time as Pluto looks back over it and it says, you got to die off in this way so that we can live in this way. And Saturn and Jupiter are trying to take us forward. They're trying to expand us. They're trying to take us to the next level, show you that you're really made of some deep, good, delicious hustle. But we had to die off in this way over here. So I cannot wait. Please, please let me know this week in what ways, even if it's subtle, it doesn't mean your whole life has to change. That's not what we're talking about here. But in what ways, as you consider from May until now, if you consider from 2019 until now, what do you know? What is something that has fallen from you? Please, please let me know in the comment section down below because we've all changed. 2020 has changed us for sure, but this Pluto retrograde got that last little fuzzy bit burned off <laughs> so that we can move forward fresh, ready to take on new challenges, new responsibilities, and new perspectives. It's going to be a good week, you guys. I really think it's going to be a good week. The world is going to do what it does, but we meet life on life's terms. That's one of the beautiful parts of astrology is it lets you know a little bit of maybe what's coming into your zone so that you have the option to choose how you're going to meet and greet that. So I look forward to seeing how the week goes for you as well. Please keep me posted in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you at the Astrology University Summit of Astrology and World Events in all of the eat and greets this week. There's only two. It's not like crazy like it normally is. <laughs> so we'll have Glenn Mitchell and Jessica Lignato. So I look 
forward to seeing you guys in those or in the replays, all right? Bye, everyone.